What's up guys, Chris Dips one how's everyone doing? Today, we're gonna talk about pouches. But before we begin, check out this clip of me trying to defeat a T-Rex. My God, he's gonna do it. Do it, do it. <gasps> Welcome back, guys. I hope you enjoyed that clip. That shit was tits money, right? My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, and they're like... Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's too much tits. Too much tits. I think I saw some fucking pubes on those. I am not. I repeat, I am not going to pop in a pouch. Those cans that I showed earlier are actually empty. Um, I'm not doing it for this video. There's no need for me to do it. But we're going to talk about the pros and cons of pouches. Here. <laughs> All right, let's begin. Pouches were introduced in 1983 by Skull. They released Skull Bandits, which is a little bit smaller than the traditional American snuff pouch right now. We're not gonna go into snooze. That's for a whole separate fucking video. But Skull introduced it in 1983, and it wasn't until about 2010 where they released Skull Wintergreen Pouches. And of course, down the road, the Fruit of the Loom flavors of Skull all got their own fucking pouches out there. And of course, Grizzly, and Skull came out with pouches. I think Timberwolf comes out with pouches. I think Longhorn makes pouches. So all the fucking major tobacco brands fucking started making pouches. As I use my Sherlock Holmes skills to search the interweb, Grizzly Wintergreen Pouches are the number one selling fucking pouch in America. I don't know if that's something that you can like put, and put a fucking wall plaque on. Number one selling pouch, Grizzly Wintergreen. I mean, I don't know, whatever, right? But as I continue to research and dig into this fucking fascinating topic of pouches, pouches are in the fucking rise. Pouches are selling like fucking crazy. I can't believe it's on the rise. And, and that's what I've been reading. And it makes perfectly good sense now because every mailer that we get from Copenhagen, from Grizzly, they all have pouches on the fucking front. I thought, what, are their pouches not selling? Why are they pushing this shit so much? But it makes perfectly good sense. People are fucking realizing smoking is bad. Number one, that's why the whole vape fucking culture, which I don't fucking get, is on the rise. But people are quitting smoking. And the easiest way to get your nicotine fix is through a pouch, right? So let's move into our pros and cons of pouches. Let's go with the pros. It's discreet. It's an easy cleanup. Pop it in, fucking toss a little fucker out. It's convenient for the workplace, right? It's convenient when you get your wisdom teeth taken out. When you visit the dentist, you know what I mean? When you can't fucking eat for fucking four days, and flick it out and you're fucking done, right? You can do it at school. You can do it any anywhere, right? You don't have to spit as much. You know, it's a lot easier to gut the dip juice of a pouch than it is a long cut, a fine cut, or a fucking snuff. All right, so let's talk about some cons. And to be honest with you guys, there's more pros to dipping pouches than there are cons. The only cons is that one little fucking pouch doesn't have enough nicotine. So you gotta toss in like fucking 10 of those bastards. Ain't nobody got time for that. Less nicotine in a pouch, less buzz that you get. So a can of pouches isn't gonna last you shit. Let's see, another con is the taste. If you put it in a pouch of Grizzly Wintergreen Pouch, it's not gonna taste the same. You got a fucking tea bag in your mouth, like literally fucking balls in your fucking mouth. You get the fabric taste of the pouch and, and you hardly get any flavor. But let me know what you guys think. What are some pros or what are some cons? Write them in the comments. I'm kind of interested to see what are you guys' thoughts on this. But that's it, guys. That's just a little bit of information. It's going to be a really short video. Um, you guys have been enjoying the fuck out of these gaming videos. Uh, at first, it was a little slow. But everyone's digging them, and I think that's fucking awesome. My last video was the Earl's Dibbles Jr. How to be a redneck video. And of course, I'm giving out these exclusive Titty Rex mud jugs here. And the winner for the last video is, boom, you won, motherfucker, tits money. Teach you what I have to charge. Those tits are all yours, bro. They're all fucking yours. Just I hope you guys enjoyed this short video. Give it a like. Give it a comment because I'm giving away another Titty Rex mud jug in the next video. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon where you guys see it on my channel page on your phones because I'm uploading at random times, random days. So again, you know, there are three, four days between each video and I'm giving away a free mud jug. So keep in touch. Keep checking out my channel because the next video is going to come probably in the next three days. And that's it for today. Pick up a Chris Tips 1 roadie at mudjug.com using my code WALKERS. You guys all know this. If you ain't dipping, you ain't living. You happy? Fatty make a funny. Mud Junior Classic. Oh, I love this song, man.
Do you want to hear my favorite song? Let's hear what you got, Critic One. Yeah, what do you think of that? You like it? That's that shitty boy music, Critic One. You ain't no real redneck quite yet. Show me how. Uh. Why would you hit Aldeva Jr.? <laughs>